Welcome to our number two of the morning after. Live here on this Monday to start off a new week on Sports Grid. Sirius XM, channel 159. That's the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM. All across the Spiz Grizz Network, that's Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. Thank you for joining us here on this Monday. It is officially game week in college football. We'll preview week zero of the college football season in just a little bit the nfl season soon starts as well preseason action across the board this weekend and one final game to round out week two on this monday night the major league baseball season in its home stretch we'll look at some of the odds for monday's slate but it's the playoffs in the WNBA. postseason action in the w all weekend long four first round series two of them have already come to a close, including in Seattle yesterday. The Storm getting past the Sticks, the Mystics, that is, with a 2-0 series sweep in the opening round. A rout of the Mystics yesterday for Seattle, 97-84. Brianna Stewart, absolutely sensational, near a triple-double, 21 points, 10 boards, 8 assists. So a double-double at the very least, as was the case for Sue Bird in her final year in the WNBA, her final year of her career, a double-double yesterday, 18 points and 10 dimes to lead Seattle to a 13-point victory, easily covering at home as a four-and-a-half-point favorite. And if you remember, as we were previewing the beginning of this opening round of the WNBA postseason, this was the 4-5 matchup, the Storm, the, fo- or the four seed, rather, the Sticks, the Mystics, the five seed, in the WNBA postseason. And according to the odds, it was the shortest distinction from that series outright price. Seattle was the outright favorite at minus 170, but Washington was plus 138. We expected this best of three series maybe to at least get to a winner take all game three. But Seattle takes advantage of their home court, court advantage and they win this series in just two games. They will advance now to take on the Las Vegas Aces, who made quick work of the Phoenix Mercury over the weekend as well. Las Vegas, a minus 4,000 outright favorite to beat Phoenix in that opening round. As we go around the WNBA postseason, though, we will see two winner-take-all game threes this week, including in Dallas on Wednesday night because the Wings have not had the sun set on their season just yet as they dispatch the Connecticut Sun yesterday to force Game number three with an 89-79 victory, winning outright as an underdog on the road in Connecticut. So as we look forward to Wednesday night back in Dallas, the Wings still booked as an underdog, getting six and a half points at home with a total of 164 and a half right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. Connecticut entered this series as a minus 800 outright favorite. Dallas, though, has forced game Number three, Dallas, the sixth seed in the WNBA postseason. Connecticut, the three seed. The Chicago Sky, the reigning WNBA champions, but lost the opening game of their first round series at home against the New York Liberty. But Chicago responded in a big, big way on Saturday evening to even up this series at one game apiece and force a game three back in New York. We'll look at those odds for game number three tomorrow night in just a second. But first, we welcome in our Sports Grid Radio audience here, the second hour of the morning after, live on this Monday, all across the grid. Sirius XM, Channel 159, all of our terrestrial radio affiliates now in the fold as well. I am Ben Stevens. The New York Liberty took the opening game of their first round series on the road against the reigning champs in the sky, winning outright as a nine and a half point favorite. But the betting markets were not all that concerned for Chicago to have that response in game number two on Saturday. Chicago was still an eight and a half point favorite. And what did the sky do? Yeah, they set a new WNBA postseason record for largest margin of victory ever in a playoff game. 38 points was that margin of victory for Chicago over New York. The sky winning on Saturday, 100 to 62, which forces a winner-take-all 
game number three tomorrow night back at the Barclays Center between the Liberty and Sky. And as you can see, the odds would indicate, despite the fact New York now has home court advantage, Chicago should emerge victorious out of this opening round series at the very least. The Sky, a seven and a half point favorite with the total standing at 167 and a half. That is game number three tomorrow night between the Liberty and the Sky. It will be a fascinating watch to see who advances out of the first round. Both teams that might advance that semifinal series, all four teams, both series rather, in a game three. Dallas and Connecticut on Wednesday night. New York and Chicago tomorrow. Again, the Sky, a seven and a half point road favorite. But it's the Aces now as an odds on favorite to win the WNBA championship. Minus 125, that price on Las Vegas. The second best odds, Connecticut at plus 350. The Sky, $2 behind the Sun at plus 550. In the Storm, who made quick work of Washington in their opening round series with a two-game sweep, still the fourth best price at plus 600. Why? Well, they have to now take on Las Vegas, and the Aces will have home floor advantage in that best of five semi-final series. Game week. College football. Let's get ready for week zero next. Pharrell, coast to coast. Pickett was the only quarterback selected in the first round for reason. Super accurate, good athlete, playing that same stadium in, in, in Pittsburgh. This is a good situation for him. I like the way Mike Tomlin is handling this. He's not naming anybody starting quarterback. Does Trubisky have the upper hand? Yes, that's a fact. But he's going to let Pickett get more reps here. Your guy Pickett, with your team, the Steelers, this is their future quarterback. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. The St. Louis Cardinals and then the Milwaukee Brewers moving in opposite directions. We're just looking for lineup prowess here, one through nine. By far, it's the St. Louis Cardinals. My thought process is, is it going to change even if the two schedules, you know, flip back and forth and we might be looking at a dead heat once we're around September 15th. I still trust the Cardinals more than I do the Brewers because if I need base hits, I can get them with the Cardinals. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. The most important thing about preseason is making sure you get the key numbers of one and two. Very, very yep. important in preseason football. If a team's down 17 to 10, you know, 50 seconds left in the game, they get a touchdown, you can guarantee the final score is going to be 17-16 or 18-7. They're going for two. They're just trying to win the game, and it, it, it doesn't count anyway. So, uh, that, therefore, the two and the one becomes real important. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Take a look at those numbers. Do you think that he's being drafted about where he should, which is not being drafted at all? I don't think he's your quarterback of the future. I think you are going to have to upgrade eventually. I understand the uh, the problem uh, that Detroit's in. If you don't have a top three, top four pick, it's hard to get that quarterback unless you're willing to give up all those picks. Do I think he's average? I think that's what you're shooting for. And I think, I think he can be average, which might be good enough for this team for the uh, you know immediate future. Here. The Sports Grid Network. Your heart's racing. The clock's running out. It all comes down to this. We're talking pregame. 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 Get locked in with game time decisions. Your hosts, Gabe Marinci and Cam Stewart, will get you ready for game time. Everything you need to know before a game goes off the board with the best lips to back it up. Make your best bet with live odds updates, late breaking news, up to the minute injury reports, and real time analytics from inside the sports books. All the odds, all the action from sports wagering insiders and industry pros like Donnie Wrightside, Gam Lou, Cousin Sal, the pro football doc, Dr. David Chow, and more. Get the winning edge every weekday afternoon from 6 to 7 p.m. Eastern, 3 to 4 Pacific. It's game time decisions only on Sports Grid.
It is officially game week for the 2022 college football season. Week zero kicks us off in just five days. Saturday, August 27th, we are here. It is game week. We have arrived at the start of the 2022 college football season. And I personally am fired up here on the morning after. Thank you for joining us here on this Monday on TMA. I am Ben Stevens. This is Sports Grid. Each and every Saturday now going forward, a lovely college football pregame show known as College Football Today. Newly revamped and invigorated myself, Kevin Walsh, Joe Lisi. 9 a.m. to noon Eastern time each and every Saturday this fall, getting you set up with a unique perspective. All of the betting lines, odds, and storylines you need to know each and every week in college football. A three-man trio that gets underway this Saturday for week zero of the college football season. And the marquee matchup, the headliner, takes place across the pond. Overseas in Dublin, in Ireland, at Aviva Stadium, a Big Ten opener between Nebraska and Northwestern. And that line has continuously worked this summer in favor of the Huskers. As it stands right now, on the opening day of this game week, Nebraska is a 12-and-a-half point favorite against the Wildcats. The over understands at 50 in a hook. Now, for most of the time, the Huskers have been in the Big Ten Conference, the better portion of more than one decade right now. This has been a very close series between Nebraska and Northwestern. Not last year, inside Memorial Stadium in Lincoln. The Huskers were booked as an 11, 11 and a half point favorite, easily covering that number at home, something Nebraska did not often do as a favorite against the spread last year, but the Huskers beat the Wildcats 56 to 7, absolutely trouncing them. Is that why the line is working in Nebraska's favor? No, it's the off-season hype train that always goes choo-choo through Lincoln around this time of year because it's not just this week zero opener for the Huskers that has people excited about Scott Frost's fifth year at the helm in Lincoln. It's the entire season, a revamped roster. Casey Thompson named the starting quarterback for the Huskers just late last week, and he wants to lead Nebraska to a potential Big Ten West championship. Right now, the Huskers have the second best odds to win this division on the FanDuel Sportsbook, and right now, Nebraska's win total is seven and a half. This is for a team that won three games a season ago. A 3-9 and nine football team, but all nine of those losses by single digits. That's the optimism for Nebraska entering year five of Scott Frost's regime. So 7.5 is that number now for Nebraska. A team that has combined to win six games in the last two years. Plus 350, as we showed you, to win the Big Ten West. The second best price Behind Wisconsin, the Badgers, the favorites in the Big Ten West Division at plus 170. Now, Northwestern has the longest odds this year to win the Big Ten West. The Cats have a team total, team win total rather, of three and a half. And the over has the juice at minus 150. A hundred to one is that price on Northwestern to win the Big Ten West entering 2022. Now, Northwestern won a humble three games a season ago. But there's this weird trend happening now in Evanston that I want to just bring to your attention in in case at the end of December, Northwestern won the Big Ten West Championship because Northwestern in 2018, a Big Ten West title. Northwestern in 2019, three wins. Northwestern in 2020, a Big Ten West title. Northwestern in 2021, three wins. Will history repeat itself in 2020? 22, a Northwestern with the longest number to win the Western Championship in the Big Ten at 100 to 1 cash, that large plus money ticket. A win on Saturday outright in Dublin as a 12 and a half point underdog for the Cats would go a long way in the Big Ten West. Scott Frost in his time at Nebraska. I'm going to pull up my notes here so we have it. Are you ready? Because I keep One note on my phone oftentimes, and it's about Scott Frost and his tenure in Lincoln, Nebraska. Here is his overall record in five years. 15 and 29, 10 and 25 against the Big Ten, 6 and 17 against his own division in the Big Ten West. If for some reason Nebraska does not win outright as a 12 and a half point favorite on Saturday in Dublin, 
I think Scott Frost just might remain in Ireland and look for greener pastures on the Irish countryside, maybe becoming a sheep farmer. I'm not entirely sure. But it will be a big start for Nebraska on Saturday, booked as a 12-and-a-half-point favorite. Pay attention to that number in what is expected of the Huskers in 2022. But it's not just Dublin on Saturday. It's not just a Big Ten opener between Nebraska and Northwestern. Illinois is in action at home hosting Wyoming. The Illini, a 10-and-a-half-point favorite. And elsewhere, off the mainland, in the Hawaiian Islands, we have an SEC team in action as well. Vanderbilt, a six-and-a-half-point road favorite off the mainland in Hawaii on Saturday. The Rainbow Warriors catching six and a half at home. Now, I am going to be a sicko and watch every game I possibly can for week zero of this college football season, including late night at 10.30 p.m. Eastern time between Vandy and Hawaii. Why does it personally mean so much to me? My name is Big Ten Ben. These are not Big Ten teams. I am already in on Vanderbilt's over of their win total this year at a humble two and a half. Now, I have done the research. I have perused all of the win totals available. Group of five, power five for the FanDuel Sportsbook. And right now, Vanderbilt has the lowest win total on the board. It's two and a half, and the under has the juice at minus 170. The over has the plus money at plus 145. For my over bet to cash, for Vandy to get three wins, This win on the road in Hawaii, nearly laying a touchdown as the road favorites, is almost a must, a necessity, week zero. That's how much week zero means to me. We will see what happens Saturday in Hawaii between the Rainbow Warriors and the Commodores of Vanderbilt. Vandy has not won an SEC game each of the last two years, not in 2021 and not in 2020. Vandy, who Clark Lee believes can be the best team in college football, he is the head coach in Nashville. Vandy gets underway as a near touchdown favorite on the road against Hawaii on Saturday. And as we go around the week zero board, another game that intrigues me, Utah State at home against UConn. The Aggies, a near four touchdown favorite, laying 27 and a half points against Connecticut. Now, Utah State won the Mountain West Conference a season ago. This game doesn't really affect their conference standing, but should be an indication of what Utah State can do potentially in 2022. Their quarterback from last year, that conference championship team, Logan Bonner, is back for Utah State. The Aggies return a lot of talent that won a conference championship a season ago, yet when we look at the Mountain West Conference odds this year, you got to scroll down a little bit to find Utah State. They have the fifth best price right now at plus 600 nearly four dollars behind the conference favorites in fresno state but it was not the bulldogs as the favorites earlier this offseason in fact it was boise state the favorites in the preseason media pick in the mountain west poll now the broncos the second best price 50 cents behind fresno state boise state at plus 280 fresno state retains jake hayner one of the best quarterbacks you will see in terms of being able to throw the football at a very high clip for a ton of yardage. Maybe that's why Fresno State and that congruity at the quarterback position is enticing for Fresno entering this year at plus 230. And San Diego State under Brady Hoke, one of the best rushing defenses and total defenses in the country a season ago. It was Utah State that beat San Diego State in that Mountain West title game. The Aggies victorious there, absolutely routing the Aztecs. And then Utah State backed that up with a bowl game victory over Oregon State. Utah State, a 27.5 point home favorite against UConn in week zero. Week one, the Aggies hit the road to Tuscaloosa to take on Alabama. They're a 39.5 point underdog. More TMA up there. the next daily fantasy millionaire no matter what you watch or where you play learn from the world's best dfs players lineup building tools 
expert projections and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. The early line. This was a surprise to me. I was anticipating a much harsher ruling on Deshaun Watson. It's hard to view this as not a win for the Deshaun Watson side of things, Donnie. They lost big time on this overall result, Kevin. There is going to be moments where other players in the NFL mess up. The precedent is set here that the NFL, not too serious about stuff like this. Only on Sports Grid. The morning after. How would you try to fix what is happening with the Yankees currently? I personally don't think it's time to smash the panic button yet. Something Aaron Judge said the other day, better to go on a run like this now in mid-August when you have a bit of a cushion right. in the division than when you're right about to go into October or when you are in October. They have the experienced veterans who have been there before. They have the youthful talent, but you got to get hot at the right time. You got to lean on depth in the pitching staff. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. Unbelievable, isn't it? I mean, it's just going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. A billion dollars a year for a $7 billion deal. And we know that UCLA and USC are on board next year, right? This is what it's all about for the Big Ten, cornering the market in terms of the national viewership perspective. Doesn't get better than this. From 2023 and beyond, which team and which conference can capture the biggest market? The Sports Grid Network. Sports Professor Rick Hara with your daily numbers game. Well, are we betting in Williamsport? Pennsylvania allows mobile betting. How about in the Little League World Series? I think not, but the clear winner is the economic impact study that's done in eastern and central Pennsylvania every year. Parents come, relatives come, COVID wiped out the tournament then last year. No parents, no crowds. And the bottom line is this is one of those situations where we're making up for lost time. You're adding a couple of new teams. You're also increasing the bracket. Remember last year uh, when a Michigan team won, there was no international side. The normal format focuses on the international side, the ESPN television deal, mega corporate sponsors, and tourism dollars that you couldn't even believe. Bottom line is getting back to normal could mean $100 million of economic impact for Pennsylvania. Back right here on the morning after, live on this Monday on Sports Grid. I am Ben Stevens. We now welcome on a regular Monday guest onto his spot here on TMA. It is FanDuel's Tom Vecchio for that prop perspective. And with so much going on right now in the world of sports, the Major League Baseball home stretch, the NFL regular season about to begin, even a preseason game, Tom, on this Monday night. We need the jack of all trades, the home run prop king for that prop perspective on the morning after. Tom, thank you so much for joining us. Hope you had a great weekend as well. Thanks for having me. I had a great weekend uh, filled with some, you know, important notes or starting to be important notes for preseason, for you know, fantasy drafts. We're in the home stretch for MLB. It's a very exciting time. And a big game on this Monday night in Major League Baseball in the Bronx between the Yankees and the Mets. Another rendition of the Subway Series, a two-game set in the Bronx at Yankee Stadium to start off this week. Right now, Tom, the Mets booked as a road favorite. Max Scherzer on the mound for the Amazons, a minus 166 price. But, Tom, you live in the area, in the tri-state area. You know right now it's a little gloomy outside. Rain showers expected the rest of the day. How much do you pay attention to the weather presumably bad in this situation before you handicap the subway series between the Yanks and the Mets. Weather is always an important issue in any game, whether it's, you know, perfectly nice out that obviously implies some great hitting weather, or if it's going to be raining that can interrupt a pitcher that could potentially push him towards the under on his pitches. You know, hypothetically, if the game starts, he racks up a couple pitches or a couple strikeouts. Yep. And then there's a delay for an hour, two hours. Sometimes that starting pitcher does not come back out. 
So the rain, when the rain is going to be happening, is also very important. It is Scherzer around the mound. It, his strikeout props is at 7.5. Uh, last time I checked, there was a little bit of plus money on the over, considering how much the Yankees have been struggling as of late. You know, over 7.5 strikeouts for, with, for Scherzer with plus money is looking pretty good despite the rain. Yeah. I think it's a great look as well because Max Scherzer did get the start in the second game of the first two game set against the Yankees in that Subway Series back in July and was dominant at home. Seven, seven innings of shutout baseball, only allowing five hits to a much hotter Yankees lineup at that time. Did only have six strikeouts, but still was under that pitching limit, finished with 99 for Max Scherzer in that opening game that he started against the Yankees this year. Now, the Mets, Tom, a weekend victory in the series against the Philadelphia Phillies in Philadelphia and hold a four-game lead over the Atlanta Braves. But the Braves have won 12 of their last 14 games. And when you look at Atlanta today, Tom, what are you thinking when it comes to the Braves? Uh, I'm thinking that the Braves are in a bit of a bounce-back spot. They lost yesterday to the Astros. Obviously, they won the series overall. But, you know, a tough loss for them yesterday. I think it's an easy matchup for them today going up against Pittsburgh. There's also some rain in this game. I think it should happen before first pitch, maybe a slight delay, but once that gets passed, it should be clear for the rest of the game. And this has me looking to the hitting options for Pittsburgh because they're going up against Runzi Contreras for the Pirates, who this year doesn't have the biggest sample size, but is allowing a 500 slugging two righties, also 1.82 home runs per nine, a 36% fly ball rate, and a 36% hard contact rate. That points me directly to Austin Riley, one of the MVP candidates in the National League, who is sitting at plus 340 for a home run, which I think is a little bit high. And Ronald Acuna is at plus 360. The Braves are coming in with a 4.84 implied run total. Obviously, Riley and Acuna have phenomenal metrics across the board. Acuna is a little bit lower this year than he was last year. It's not the same season, obviously, you know, starting late because of the injury. So I'm confident in Acuna and his skill to kind of have some positive regression. So I love, love them both to hit home runs. Obviously, Riley RBI is plus 115, and Acuna RBI is plus 130. It's looking like a really nice spot for the Braves tonight to come back with a win after a loss yesterday. The home run prop king, Tom Vecchio, has been on quite a roll here with the picks that he has given out to you to hit a long ball on a Monday on the morning after. And Tom, we had this discussion briefly last week as well. There's about 40 games left for most teams across Major League Baseball. It is that home stretch sprint where everybody has an eye on the postseason. Well, there's some teams right now that are good in postseason contention, and there's other teams we thought might be in playoff contention at this point of the season that are not, like the Rays, who have one of the wild card spots in the American League, against the Angels today, Tom, where Los Angeles not even sniffing a postseason opportunity right now. So how does that affect your handicap when you have a good team in playoff contention versus a bad team that's already thinking about their offseason plans? So when it comes to the bad, I think it's a little bit easier to look at the bad team because if, you know, the team that's in playoff contention or fighting for a wild card, they're going to be doing everything they can to win. And that means they probably should be operating rationally, or at least I would hope they'd be oper operating rationally. Right. When it comes to the, you know, the worst of the two teams, I think that a lot of it can start with the pitcher. If it's a pitcher that they just called up, maybe they want to give him some length. Maybe they want to see what he can do. Just get him some experience, get him some innings. So that would have me interested in his strikeout prop, probably the over, depending if I, you know, looked at his, you know, AAA numbers, wherever they might be, because there's no reason for them to pull him after four innings, even if he struggles a little bit. They want to see what they have with some of these younger pitchers. So I think that this is where, you know, some of the teams out of the race can be a little bit interesting when it comes to player props, because there's no reason for them to pull pitchers. There's no reason for them right. to, you know, pinch hit, uh, you know, some of their top hitters, just like, let the young guys out there, let them play and let them, you know, let's see what they can do. So that's where this can be yeah. interesting. We also have to worry about, you know, players being called up, sent down, that kind of stuff uh, with so many teams at this point in the year. Yeah, you're trying to evaluate your future. And this is a great time for teams that are out of the postseason race to do just that. Tampa, a minus 220 home favorite today against the Halos. There are three teams right now, Tom, that occupy all three of the American League wildcard spots, and they're all tied in those wild card standings the Rays the Blue Jays the Mariners and then on the outside currently looking in the Minnesota Twins two and a half games back of that American League wild card race the Twins also a heavy favorite at home today with Sonny Gray on the bump minus 215 is that money line price 
How are you targeting, Tom, the start for Sonny Gray today against the Rangers? So for Sonny Gray, uh, I also think it's a bounce back spot for the Twins. You know, a couple of these good teams or that are in playoff contention are, are due for some bounce back wins today. I think the Twins are one of them. Ever kind of a rough yeah. loss yesterday against the Rangers. Uh, and that has me going to the over on five and a half strikeouts. It's only sitting at minus 108. For the season, Sonny Gray has a 24.3% strikeout rate, but in four of his last five starts, he has been over that rate on a game-by-game -game basis, really boosting up that strikeout rate, which is good to see. The Rangers are a favorable matchup. They have a 23.5% strikeout rate versus righties, which is the eighth worst in the league. Uh, he's coming off of a 10 strikeout performance in his most recent start. He's been at five in a few of the starts before that. So he's right around this. It's very little juice at minus one away. The only issue I have with Sonny Gray is sometimes his pitch count. They don't let him go too far. He's dealt with a couple injuries this year, been on the IL multiple times. So sometimes we only see him around 80, 85 pitches. He was up at 90 in one of these most recent starts. That's where we want to see him in a favorable matchup, a game that the Twins should be winning, you know, against the strikeout heavy team like the Rangers, Sonny Gray, the over five and a half. I like the look right there. Right now, the Twins two and a half games back, like I mentioned in the American League wild card race, but only a game and a half behind the Cleveland Guardians for that top spot in the American League Central. Cleveland, the favorite still in the AL Central right now on the FanDuel Sportsbook. You saw the season-long prop for Tom Vecchio for this NFL campaign. Before we get to the regular season, Tom, preseason action on this Monday night at MetLife Stadium. The Jets at home, a two-and-a-half-point underdog against the Atlanta Falcons. The total stands currently at 38-and-a-half. Tom Vecchio, how do you approach preseason football? Uh, for preseason football, you know, I don't bet preseason football. I oh, mostly, I'm mostly interested in the the snap counts for especially some of the rookies. Uh, you know, seeing what you know, Brees Hall is going to be doing. I don't think Drake London's going to be playing for Atlanta because uh, he dealt with that issue, that injury last week or the week before. So I basically look at the rookies. What are we going to be seeing from you know Kyle Pitts, a uh, player that I have in one of my dynasty leagues? I just want to see the young players develop. Uh, I stay away from betting and kind of just look at the uh, the recap, seeing what we see uh, from the, the snap counts and whatever it might be. Maybe see what the box score says about Joe Flacco, because last week in the Jets' week one preseason opener, Zach Wilson goes out, has surgery early last week in L.A., maybe can return for the start of the regular season, but it should affect the Jets' win total. It's at five and a half right now. The over has the juice at minus 135. And some options if you want to back Gang Green or maybe fade Gang Green if it is Joe Flacco in terms of those alternate win so that's a regular season market as our season long props we take that prop perspective now for a second year running back who plays in the nfc north for the green bay packers in aj dillon tom why are you buying in on dillon's stock for 2022 so the Packers have a lot going on uh, this offseason, uh, you know, into the season. Obviously, losing uh, Devontae Adams is a huge loss to their receiving core. And right now, I think the receiving core is okay-ish. You know, Al Lazard, Sammy Watkins, Randall Cobb, Romeo Dubes. Like, this is a very, very mixed bunch where Sammy Watkins is yeah. a veteran, but he's dealt with plenty of injuries. You now, Randall Cobb is getting up there in age. We don't know what we're going to be seeing from the rookies and how much Aaron Rodgers is going to be trusting them. So we have all these mixed things when it comes to the receiving core. What we do know is that Aaron Jones has been remarkably consistent for the Packers. And I kind of see him playing almost a Alvin Kamara role in the slot, setting about wide. And I think they're going to they're try and save him from taking this you know, ground and pound. And they're going to leave that role to A.J. Dillon to have this kind of more of a balanced approach because they need a little more consistency in their passing game. I think it helps that the Packers offensive line is right now ranked fifth by PFF, which is a good sign for AJ yeah. Dillon. So they shift uh, Aaron Jones to the outside, a little bit more of a pass catching role because of the lack of experience in the wide receivers with uh, Aaron Rodgers, and then leave the rushing game to uh, Dillon for just plenty of yards this season. I think that's what it equals. I think that's a great look and a great way of discussing changes in an off season for an NFL team. The prop perspective, with FanDuel's Tom Vecchio, the home run prop king, and a season-long prop in the NFL as well. Tom, as always, we appreciate your time. More of the morning after, up next, following the break. Sports Grid. 
your 24-7 sports wagering network. People are going to the betting window betting and betting them the now rim. before the trade takes place. How Diamond dare they bets. do what's fiscally responsible? See how it plays out. Buffalo's going all in right Football now. Football full football. circle. All their chips in the middle of the table. It's do or die for and them. And Godwin being out. They, they've had a little bit of a shakeup. In-game live all access. You could take the points. You could take the money line. And we had to go to San Jose to maybe a small play on San I'm going to go both underdogs here. I don't want to hear it anymore. Wow. In game the Phillies here. Prime over minus time. 128. We do have to lay up a little bit of wood here, Donnie, but I think against Patrick Corbin. But boy, you want to give me eight and a half points with a desperate team facing elimination. Get the winning edge. Only on Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. The morning after. I look at Deshaun Watson. Uh, you know, now at this point, I'm just kind of looking forward to seeing, you know, how does he come back? How does he look when he gets back on the field? And, yeah. you know, especially more than anything, because we've talked about, you know, hypotheticals time and time and time again of what's the suspension going to be? To actually have an answer, I, it's almost a little bit of a sense of relief, at least when it comes to the Cleveland side of it. The Sports Grid Network. Pharrell, coast to coast. How impressive do you think the Phillies are with Thor in that rotation with Wheeler, Nola, and it goes on and on. I just think Atlanta has a shot not only to beat Philly, but clearly has a chance to beat the Mets. They imposed their will in the first two games in the series. The, the Mets look like they're going to be able to just, you know, ride this down to the end and salt away the division. But uh, it'll be a very interesting dynamic when those two teams play against each other. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. Let me help you, NCAA. We will wipe the bowl season out completely. We will put in a 30-team playoff at a minimum. We will wipe out the cupcake schedules, and everybody will eat at the end of the year. More money in your pockets, college football guys. More fun in my pocket here, and a chance for gambling on my end of it. It's a win-win scenario. On Sports Grid. Back right here on the morning after on Sports Grid and Sirius XM Channel 159. I am Ben Stevens, but in moments of turmoil in my life, when there is so much going on, we need a clear path. We need clear direction. We need sage advice. So who do we call on? Our advisor, our sportsbook conciliary, Dave Sherapan. Joining us here on this Monday on the morning after, getting ready for a new season in the National Football League. And of course, the stretch run with October baseball very, very soon as well. Maybe even for those Baltimore Orioles that you see on his jersey, on the lid. The O's just two and a half games out of the American League wildcard. Is that the statement you're making, Sherapan? The Orioles will be a postseason team come October. Good morning, Benjamin. It's great to be here. Thank you for that welcome. All I want you to call me for is breakfast or lunch, okay? That's all. We don't need all this other advice. and all. Don't, you don't have to call me in times of turmoil, although you can. Why? You can call me anytime. I'll pick you up at okay, the airport, good. for goodness sakes. Just come out and hang out. Bring Shames with you. And, uh, yes, I can handle both of you. Any season, Listen. any time, let's go. I wish the grid would pay for a little trip to Vegas. Maybe a trip to so do I. We'll get to the start of college football in just a little bit. But Sherpan, behind you, it is nighttime in Pittsburgh. It is always it is. nighttime in Pittsburgh here on Mondays on the morning after. And the Steelers, Sherpan, perfect, unbeaten 2-0 and 
in the preseason. And all three quarterbacks in a new QB room for the Steelers have looked rather sharp in these preseason yes. contests, including the rookie, Kenny Pickett, 6 of 7 on Saturday, 76 yards, another touchdown. Kenny Pickett has only had three incompletions in his 22 attempts so far this preseason. So, Sherapin, I ask you a simple question that might have a complex answer. Who starts week number one at quarterback for Pittsburgh? You know I say nobody knows Squadoosh all yep. the time, Ben. I have no idea who's starting a quarterback right now. But I'll tell you this, I still think it's Trubisky, but mm. the case is being made for yep. for for Kenny Pickett. But there was a, a an old wise man that once said, once you start listening to the people in the stands, you end up sitting with them. There's Ooh. no one in that room or organization that is going to make a determination of who's playing quarterback by what the people want, what you want, or what I want, or what anyone thinks. So I still think the odds-on favorite is Mitchell Trubisky, if you want my answer. But again, yeah, I've been known to be wrong occasionally too, so take that for what it's worth. But uh, did he look good? That's all I want to yeah. know. Did he look good uh, in the Very. game of Jacksonville? Okay. Very sharp. Five of eight, first three possessions of the game. 60 yards, looked really good in the week one opener in the preseason as well. And Mitchell Trubisky has made the start in both games so far. But you saw the stats on Kenny Pickett, the only quarterback drafted in the first round this past draft. So there is some optimism for the future of that quarterback position for the Pittsburgh Steelers. And Dave, right now from the odds perspective, Kenny Pickett has remained the favorite to win the National Football League Offensive Rookie of the Year all off season, but the market has worked against him. The price was as short as plus 550. He is still the favorite again, but it's nine to one. So the market has worked against him, maybe because Mitchell Trubisky will start the season for the Steelers as QB number one. But from your odds maker perspective, as you look at that number on Kenny Pickett, the betting favorite to an offensive rookie of the year, how many games do you believe Kenny Pickett would have to play this season to make good as that betting favorite to win Offensive Rookie of the Year? Well, you know, because I mean, we've talked about this at great lengths, these voting markets are much yep. different than just a game market. So um, I would think he has to play over half of the games and be mm. beyond successful. So, I mean, I would, I would venture to say, I mean, if there's 17 games in NFL season, He's got to play at least 12 of them to build up stats against someone else's case and, you know, go from there. So I don't know. I really don't know if there's a particular number, but I know mm. that I'm surprised he's this low. Of, I mean, the odds on favorite, he's not the starter. So, so yeah. to me, I'd be up on the table in a room going, guys, maybe we should lower some of the other ones and put – his a little bit higher maybe not that many people are betting him and that's why it's moving up in, you know slowly but yeah. um i can't believe he's the favorite i can't it doesn't make it's any sense it's a very interesting very interesting market share pad because unlike other awards that we see in football where quarterbacks dominate whoever wins it's not the case for the offensive rookie of the year only three of the last 10 winners of this award have played quarterback and again you need to be out there and it was a weaker quarterback class for the 2022 NFL draft so we've seen wide receivers like Jamar Chase last year and running backs in years past win this award that might be the case again as we get ready for the upcoming year in the National Football League but as we focus on the teams here Sheriff Pan the Pittsburgh Steelers bitter rival within the AFC North the Baltimore Ravens are a oh. preseason powerhouse 22 straight preseason victories, including oh. last night in the desert in Arizona, 24-17. to 17. And the books, in my opinion, Sherapan, have caught on to this win, obviously. 22 straight yeah. wins for Baltimore. The Ravens were booked as a 5.5 point, 6 point favorite and still covered that number. So how does the historic win streak in the preseason, now standing at 22 straight games, affect oh. the lines we see on the Ravens for the preseason? Meanwhile, Benjamin, I thought you were my friend, and you're bringing up 
for the books. This is not what the books want to talk about here on Monday morning. They can't put up a number that the Ravens will cover. They actually did. This place, this thing opened up a little bit at seven and a half early mm. on. That was the number that it hit and came down. So the bad guys got what they needed at plus seven and a half, got the game to yeah. seven. The books knew the peak, went to six. Um, books probably minimized risk on that one. Wasn't that bad because now the number's established. I used to sit on the in the room and I'd be one of the guys making the case. Just make it seven to start. Let yep. the people bet it that need us to, you know, know that that's the number and bring it down and go from there. So I'm sure that finally uh, bookmakers and sports books all around the country with the help of the rhombuses and the parallelograms, you know, the squares and the sharps, but they don't like to be called that. So I call them the right. rhombuses and the parallelograms. I don't want to get anybody to get mad at me. They did okay too. What do you do the next game? Maybe not book it. I mean, seriously, yep. just save everybody the aggravation. It's enough. Like, who knows who's playing in the third game? This third preseason game is, I mean, a preseason is hard enough for the books and for the betters, right. but the sharp guys and, the, again, the rhombuses and the parallelograms, they get the information and they make these plays. The third game is the last game, okay? Yep. And everybody's anticipation, is it a peak? It's the hardest one to bet. It's the hardest one to book because you really don't know who's approaching it, like the real dress rehearsal and who's mailing it in until maybe right before or the you know two days before. Watch the line moves this week. You thought last week was crazy. Watch the line moves this week. There'll be two or three games that fly, meaning five to seven points side, totals four or five points, big line movements. Can we talk about some Big Ten football, please? I mean, I know a, a guy second. who might know a little bit of thing about Big Ten football. We only got a couple minutes left. I know. You know I was going to ask you about Big Ten football, and we'll get to there. But before we get to week three in the NFL preseason, we have to finish out week two, which we do tonight. A standalone Monday night football game in New Jersey, East Rutherford to be exact. The Jets, a two-and-a-half-point home underdog against the Atlanta Falcons, a total that stands at 38-and-a-half. Only one game tonight, Champagne. To round out week two of the NFL preseason, what do you expect the handle to look like for the Falcons and the Jets? Well, if the people are coming with the Ravens' money, the handle will be pretty good. I mean, everybody did really well, so I'm sure the people will, will look to play this. But, I mean, you're talking about the Falcons and the Jets, the biggest game of the day and the biggest New York game of the day of course. has nothing to do with the Jets, okay, or the Giants or any of that stuff. The Mets and the Yankees are playing tonight, you know, and I yeah. mean, I got the Baltimore stuff on, and they're going to make a real run for this wild card. They're not going any way anywhere. But Scherzer's minus 160-something on it, at Yankee Stadium? What's wrong with the Yankees? The Mets keep winning games. Canna hits that homer yesterday, runs around the field like Pedro Serrano, threw his bat up into the upper deck. It was one of the most yep. unbelievable, you know, bat tosses ever. And you're asking me about the Jets? Well, I just want to know. know about the Jets. I don't know about the Jets. I love preseason football. That's really my passion. Well, Big Ten football is actually my passion. Oh, and we already you. discussed Mets and the Yankees, and I was going to ask you about that if we had time after our big 10 discussion because it's game week sheriff pan yes, officially is. the start of the 2022 college football season on right. saturday in dublin between northwestern and nebraska one of many okay. games that we have on saturday week zero in the line all off season dave has worked yeah. in favor of the corn huskers now laying 12 and a half in aviva stadium in dublin against the wildcats how much more attention will this game and other week zero tilts get this week now that it's officially game week in college football? Oh, it's time. It's finally here. And uh, I mean, dare I say this is the marquee game of the day on Saturday? I think it is, other than. Don't laugh when Hawaii. you say that. Don't so, laugh when I'm, you say I, that. Did, did okay. I do that no, out loud? Ahead. I did. All right, I apologize. <laughs> but it is the marquee game of the day uh, Vanderbilt, Hawaii. Uh, will be yep. the other marquee game of the day because it's the last game of the day and it's the late game of the day. 
But both these lines are going to move. Vanderbilt, six and a half point favorite, 54 and a half, 55 is the total around that number. Look, nobody's betting Northwestern, Ben. This is this is the no. start of another new era for Nebraska football. <laughs> it's 13 in a lot of places. It's 50 and a half most places. It feels like a very high-scoring blowout type game for Nebraska. Is it that easy? Mm. I like personally, I hate the line. I hate it. I hate the spread at 12 and a half in favor of the Huskers. I think the total is spot on at 50 and a half. Now, listen, last year in Lincoln, Nebraska routed Northwestern 56 to seven. But that's a very different thing to go on the road in Dublin. And Nebraska as a favorite last year. Say it like not Dublin. Very Dublin. 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 They're playing in Dublin. Dublin, Dublin, Ireland. Yeah, I use Dublin every time. And people sometimes call me out for it. Here's what I will say, Sherapan. Last year, Nebraska, more than a touchdown favorite on the road against Illinois in their season opener week zero in a game that was originally scheduled for Dublin, but due to COVID restrictions, had to be played in Champaign, Illinois. Nebraska lost that game outright by eight. That's the thing for the Huskers, maintaining expectations. So, hey. We, we, we got to get ready to go, Dave. That's all I'm saying. The dog can cover. The dog can cover. It's not out of the question. No. Man, it's they not fired me up this morning. Yeah, I love on. it. It's been Thanks 10 football. Me. It's game week. Sheriff Pan, we appreciate your time as always. We round out the show up next here on the morning app. The morning after. How would you try to fix what is happening with the Yankees currently? I personally don't think it's time to smash the panic button yet. Something Aaron Judge said the other day, better to go on a run like this now in mid-August when you have a bit of a cushion in the division than when you're right about to go into October or when you are in October. They have the experienced veterans who have been there before. They have the youthful talent, but you got to get hot at the right time. You got to lean on depth in the pitching staff. The Sports Grid Network. Fantasy Sports Today. Chris Olave can give you a lot. Chris Olave is a very polished wide receiver, great route runner, great speed, great hands. He is NFL ready. This guy is just ready, hit the ground running. I think Drake London will go and get a little bit more buzz because of where he was selected. And people say, oh, he's the only guy there. Yeah, he's the only guy there. But it's the island of misfit toys in Atlanta. So you have to understand that. Whereas you have Winston, you have Michael Thomas, you have a more complete offense. The Sports Grid Network. The early line. This was a surprise to me. I was anticipating a much harsher ruling on Deshaun Watson. It's hard to view this as not a win for the Deshaun Watson side of things, Donnie. They lost big time on this overall result, Kevin. There is going to be moments where other players in the NFL mess up. The precedent is set here that the NFL, not too serious about stuff like this. Only on Sports Grid. You might be the next Daily Fantasy Millionaire. No matter what you watch or where you play, learn from the world's best DFS players. Lineup building tools, expert projections, and advanced stats change the way you play the game. Dominate the competition. DailyRoto.com, the player's choice. Sports Grid, your 24 7 sports wagering network. They played last game. The early line. Take a look at the top four seeds here in the Big Ten. They're going to play Aaron less. Aaron Rodgers and the morning the after. Wilson. We saw movement in the marketplace like Orlando. Fantasy Magic. Sports the Today. The Cavaliers are a little thin as well. Newswire. Minus 160 favorite on the money line today for Arizona. Pharrell, coast to coast. That's where they win cups. Stanley Cups over there. Give me the game pass. time decision. Kind of bizarre when you consider like the, everybody is out for the Warriors. In game live all like access. Mandy. I like Mandy against Bam. I think Mandy can win the game, take a corner. In half. game oh, live man. prime oh, time. The major, the PGA champion. In yes. game live overtime. All done before the final bet. Get the game. winning edge.
only on Sports Grid. We close out our two hours together here on the morning after live on this Monday in just a couple of minutes. Thank you for joining us all across the Sports Grid Network. That includes Sirius XM, Channel 159, the home for Sports Grid Radio on Sirius XM, anywhere the Sports Grid Network can be found. It's the Spiz Grizz. That's what we do even on a Monday, and I am Ben Stevens. And although Dave Sharapan would tell you the biggest sporting event in the tri-state greater New York area is not the Jets and the Falcons to close out week two of the preseason. It's the Mets and the Yankees in a Subway Series in the Bronx. I would say I want to focus on football. So that's what I'll do before we say farewell. And before we say goodbye, it's time for an NFL preseason best bet to round out week number two. It is time for Bye Bye Bye. The Dirty Birds, a two and a half point favorite on the road in New Jersey tonight against the New York Jets at MetLife Stadium. The total is 38 and a half. And after the strong over trends that we saw to begin the preseason this year, including the Hall of Fame game, 14 of the first 17 games hit and over, we saw totals get lofty for week number two. There is expected growth in those numbers week to week, but they got even higher because of what we saw week number one and those strong over trends in the preseason. This is 38 and a half. Both the Jets and the Falcons went over in their week one games. Atlanta scored 27 points. New York, not bad either, finishing with 24. But there's some bad weather expected in the greater New York City area today. It might get a little sloppy at MetLife. I lean under 38 and a half. If you believe in Joe Flacco, go ahead and bet the over. I don't know how much we'll see of Marcus Mariota. It might be a lot of Desmond Ritter, the rookie quarterback for the Falcons, which I think keeps us under 38 in a hook tonight. It's also the first official game week of college football season. I'm Big Ten Ben. We're betting unders to start things off. The morning after each and every weekday. It starts at 9 a.m. Eastern. I'm Ben Stevens, and we'll talk tomorrow.